The interplay between sickle cell anemia and malaria is a classic problem in evolutionary biology. Evo Beaker's Sickle Cell Alleles Lab uses this example to talk about natural selection, drift, and the Hardy-Weinberg equation at a level designed for introductory biology and genetics classes. On the left of the screen is a village in Africa. The colors and stripes on the people represent different genotypes. Green people have two normal hemoglobin alleles, red people have two sickle hemoglobin alleles, and tan people represent the heterozygotes. As the model runs, people in the population mate randomly, and allele frequencies are tracked in the graph on the right. The workbook starts by asking students to figure out what proportion of the population carries the sickle cell allele. It's easy to tell who is homozygous for the HBS allele because these individuals have sickle cell anemia, but unlike on the screen, in real life you can't tell who is a heterozygote. Students are guided through using the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate the proportion of carriers given the proportion of people with sickle cell anemia. The next exercise looks at selection. Students can move the village to different areas of Africa, as shown on the map on the right, and see what happens to the allele frequencies when there are less mosquitoes and malaria around. By switching to a dry area in Africa, they can see there are no mosquitoes in the blue sky above the village, and thus no malaria or heterozygote advantage. They can measure how allele frequencies change under these conditions, both in the village and on the graph. At this point, we start moving from selection to drift. The sickle cell allele was likely introduced to the village by a single individual. In the previous experiment, students discovered that one copy of the sickle cell allele is advantageous with high malaria loads, so that allele should spread through the population. But will it? Students change the initial number of carriers to one and run the model several times to see that there is some chance involved in evolution and it's not all deterministic. The final exercise looks at drift. Students are asked to imagine that modern medicine has cured both diseases and must predict what will happen to the allele frequencies with no selection. They observe how genetic drift acts in small, medium, and large populations. At the end of the lab, we have an extension activity that expands this to a more full-featured population genetics equation, which can be used for open-ended exploration and is also useful as a lecture activity after students complete the lab. Just like all our labs, we have a detailed workbook that takes students through all the experiments step by step. The workbook also includes an intro to the diseases, data tables, and spaces for them to answer questions and make predictions as they are asked to do these things. So although, just as with all our labs, we recommend doing this one in class, it is also very suitable for a homework or for an online class where students are going to be working independently. If you would like to see a sample of this lab or any of our others, go ahead and get in touch with us and we'll be happy to get you more information on the program and the labs. Thanks very much.